Hey everybody, CW here, Card Wolf, because I'm always on the hunt for great cards. Today, however, I am on the hunt for great comics. This is uh, part two of our hunt through this uh, big box of vintage comics that I brought back from the East Coast. Comics that have been uh, languishing in this box for many decades now and that I have not looked at for quite a long time. I received a lot of really nice uh, <clears throat> comments from you guys last week when I started going through this box and I thought let's return to this again this week and see how far we can get. I think we are maybe about halfway through this box. Maybe we can finish up today in part two and if not then I guess we'll do a part three. That'll be okay with me. I'm having a lot of fun going through these and uh, bagged and boarded uh, several of these up after last week's episode and uh, they look really great. So uh, happy to go through these. I think this is where we left off. I've had this box just sitting on the floor in my study for uh, the last week or so, just waiting for me to get into it. And I, I think uh, I am ready today to do so. First, I want to give a shout out to Something Old and Something New Card Rips. Uh, if you haven't been over to their channel, I haven't, I haven't shouted them out in a long time and really feel like I need to. They recently celebrated a huge uh, milestone of getting 500 subs, which is just phenomenal. And it's a real number. They actually do have 500 subs. It's a real number, unlike some of the uh, numbers that, uh, you know, other channels have been have been putting out there lately. Channels that shall remain nameless, obviously. I'm not calling into question anybody who is, uh, you know, having, you know, million subscriber giveaways or anything like that. That's, that's definitely not what I'm doing. Uh, I just want to give uh, something old and something new a, a big shout out because that is a huge achievement and they're a great channel if you haven't been over there. They do uh, rips, they open uh, mystery boxes, they, they do all kinds of great stuff over there. I've been really enjoying their channel uh, for, for many months now and so uh, head on over there if you haven't and let's get them to 600. Uh, I think they are they are very deserving. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, this is about where we left off last time. I'm just going to start taking these out one at a time again. You can see on the top, we've got uh, Justice League number 131. That's in pretty good shape, I think. Uh, it's got a little pencil mark right there, but other than that, that's uh, it's a pretty nice uh, comic there. Here's uh, Superman 348. Superman 348 looks like... Uh, Superman is daring to battle the fury of the master of wind and storm. So he's basically battling the weather. I mean, that's what this is really about. Superman goes up and he, he battles the weather. You think he'd have something better to do than that. Let's see what he's doing here in Superman number uh, 339, which uh, was just before his battle with the weather. Here it looks like uh, Superman has been turned into a real man of steel. And uh, probably by, by Jimmy. I assume that's Lois and Jimmy there, so I assume Jimmy's gun somehow caused this because as I've covered on this channel before, Jimmy Olsen is Superman's worst villain menace threat. Look out, Gotham. The Joker is back in town. Yes, he is. Here he is on uh, Batman number 251. And uh, this one's not in such great shape, actually. The, the spine, uh, the cover is still definitely intact, but the staples... Uh, have ripped the uh, spine there, and there's a lot of chipping all along the edge. So this one's uh, this one's definitely uh, not in as good a shape as I would like it to be, but still a beautiful cover for sure. Here we've got a nice uh, Superman family giant, which is uh, got Batgirl as the guest star. I always loved Batgirl. She's still one of my favorite uh, comic book characters. Uh, Superman family. It looks like uh, Cleopatra and Supergirl and Batgirl and many of the other superheroes are cheering them on as they battle with Cleopatra, who I wasn't aware ever had superpowers. Looks like the villain Jimmy Olsen is there in his bell-bottoms. I think those are like bell-bottoms of strength plus two or something like that. Elementals, which is a you know, very old comic from Kamiko, and I used to really like this comic. As you can see, they're doing sort of an Abbey Road thing there, uh, mimicking the uh, Beatles cover to that famous album. And it is, uh, I thought it was, it is a wraparound cover. And those are the uh, main characters and elementals. Very sort of a adult comic, very grown-up themes in this comic. This wasn't a kid's comic by any means. Very, uh, very interesting stuff. They broke a lot of new ground in this comic. Always really liked elementals a lot, so I can understand why that would be in there. Let's check out this one. This is a dollar comic from the 70s. Adventure Comics, and it features uh, a novelette, 
that uh, stars the JSA, Justice Society of America. There's also an Aquaman story in here, so I can see why I would uh, have uh, bought this one as I was a big Aquaman fan back in the day. And then uh, another Detective Comics here. Here's a super spectacular Detective Comics. This is actually bagged and boarded. Well, that's pretty cool. I don't think we found very many of those in here, but uh, this one is bagged and boarded. A Monster Walks Wayne Manor. That sounds like it could be like a Halloween issue or something. A hundred pages, only 50 cents. This is uh, from the 70s, no doubt, and uh, it also features extra. A lot of these are reprint stories. These are the uh, extra stories, and they're reprints with uh, other famous characters. Hawkman looking very grim down there. Cheer up, Hawkman. You're a superhero. And you're on Earth now. You're not back at your awful home planet. All right, so here we've got Batman. This is uh, much more uh, recent. This is from July 86, number 397, The Triumph of Two-Face. And uh, when, I think when it looks like this and there's no uh, barcode, that is the newsstand edition, if I'm remembering right. I'm sure if I'm wrong, one of you guys will correct me in the comments, and I look forward to you doing that. Anytime I get something wrong or I, I say something that is inaccurate, I, I would like to be corrected, because uh, while I have collected comics for a long time, most of you uh, guys who have your own comics channel know a lot more about them than I do. Uh, so this is another dollar comics. I used to really like these. They were a pretty good bargain. I mean, you're getting a lot of, you can see you're getting a lot of pages in here, and these pages are in pretty good shape. They're not exactly white, but they're not tan either, so... Uh, using the Overstreet Owl Guide, I'm sure I could uh, figure out exactly where these fall, but I don't have one of those cards with me. So anyway, Dollar Comic, World's Finest, a lot of great superheroes in there. Uh, that's a nice one. I'll probably uh, bag and board that one up. Here's another Dollar Comic. This one is Five Star Superhero Spectacular. This is from 1977, as you can see, which is printed twice there for some reason. And uh, you get five all-new epics. So this is... Uh, a great one, or it was a great one, a summer special, and it's all new stories. This, These were not reprints in here. You get all new stories, and as you can see, those pages are in pretty good shape, too, honestly. They're very white. I don't see a lot of tan on those pages, so that's not too bad. The cover could be a, a little nicer. It's Neil Adams' art, which is always pretty wonderful to find, too. Neil Adams, one of the great comic book illustrators. All right, so here are some older issues, it looks like, down here. Well, here's Let's go ahead and do this one. This is another uh, dollar comic of World's Finest, and then we'll go to some of those older issues. It looks like Superman's been turned into a vampire, probably by Jimmy Olsen, because that's how it goes with Superman. Yeah, he's the Vampire of Steel. Wow. That uh, guest starring the Phantom Stranger who always uh, shows up when you least expect it, and you never know if he's going to actually help things or make them worse. He's sort of like the He's kind of like the Doctor Strange of the DC uh, Universe. You guys can tell me if you agree with that or if you think I'm crazy. This is from March of uh, year 249. No, that's number 249. I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, this is an older one here. This is 80-page giant of Superboy, number 147, and it co-stars the Legion of Superheroes. This is also bagged but not boarded. And uh, it's got a uh, little folds down at the bottom there, some chipping up at the top, and it looks like some blemishes uh, right here. It looks sort of uh, smudgy there. So uh, beautiful cover, but I wish it were in better condition. Uh, really nice cover with that. And I always, I, I'm very conflicted about the Legion of Superheroes, honestly. I always wanted to like them more than I did. And the reason I could never get into them, because I feel like if you're a fan of the Legion of Superheroes, that's all you're a fan of, because that's all you can kind of track. Because there's like 80 different kids in the Legion of Superheroes. And like, you remember who Saturn Girl is. You remember who, you know, Young Brainiac is. And, you know, I think Lightning Lad is probably in there somewhere. And, and this guy who shows up a lot. Um, but, you know, beyond that, you've got to memorize all these other characters to make sense of what's going on whenever you're reading a Legion of Superheroes comic. So I never really got into them as much as I would have liked to. It just... It seemed like too much work, and I don't, I don't really want to put work in when I'm reading comics. This is a nice uh, older one, probably from the early 70s, Adventure Comics number 383, starring Supergirl. And uh, it looks like uh, she's, she's dead, but she's not. It's very confusing. Please stop my funeral. They can't hear me because I don't exist. And Jimmy Olsen, there he is. There's Jimmy Olsen again almost certainly responsible for whatever mishap has befallen Supergirl. I think we can agree on that. That looks like Perry White there. You don't see him on the cover of comic books very much, so that's pretty cool. 
Prairie White, the editor of The Daily Planet. All right, so we got some Aquaman comics down here. It looks like we got two of the same ones there, so I'll have to take those out in a moment together and compare them and contrast. Here's Adventure Comics starring Aquaman. This is number 444, and this is undoubtedly from... Uh, Probably from the 70s, maybe the early 80s, I'm not sure. This is also bagged, but not boarded, and the bag it's in is, uh, looks like a Golden Age bag, so it's a little too big for this comic. But uh, pretty nice cover there. I don't recognize the artist, but uh, pretty interesting cover. Though the shark's face looks a little too human-like for me. It sort of looks like Richard Nixon, actually. I don't, I don't really like that. Oh, and here we have, look at this, our first Marvel comic. I don't think we've pulled a Marvel book out of this box. We get a Spider-Woman number... Number five, I guess this is. That's pretty sweet. I'm always a big fan of Spider-Woman. That's another of my uh, favorite comic book characters. And I used to have a run of, because uh, they came out when I was uh, collecting comics in the 70s, and I did have a run of Spider-Woman, but uh, I have not discovered that in fear uh, that may be gone at this point. Um, anyway, it's, it's a shocker like none you've seen before. So Spider-Woman, that's a nice Marvel comic to find. And here we have two of the very same issues of uh, Adventure Comics starring Aquaman and uh, this one was not bagged and, and it does look like it's almost certainly in worse condition uh, at least around the staple area and up at the top here it looks like it's got I'm not sure what that is maybe some looks like some some mold or something or maybe some water damage I'm not sure what that is I was always very careful with my comics so this may have been one I picked up out of like a quarter box or something uh, this also has an extra story about Creeper in it, who was never a character I cared about. Uh, yeah, this one's in definitely better shape. The uh, white on the cover is a little whiter. I don't know if my camera's picking that up, but uh, it's a little whiter, and the, the cover is in much better shape. So uh, that one that is in the, uh, the bag is in much better shape. So here we've got another old World's Finest, and this one Batman is X'd out for some reason, probably because he's dead. Man, a lot of dead superheroes keep showing up in these. Last week when I looked through these, uh, Hawkman brought in Wonder Woman's dead body, and Aquaman was declared dead in one of them. Now we've got Batman dead, and Supergirl was dead in one of those ones we just looked at there by Jimmy Olsen's hand, undoubtedly. Let's face it, Robin, now that Batman's dead, it's your job to take his place. Suck it up, Robin. That's basically what I'm hearing there. But then uh, Robin's Revenge is what the story is called, so that's very interesting. It's a shame somebody put the X through Batman, although I wonder if if that was done... I'm going to have to look this comic up because I can't tell through this bag. I'll bring it up closer to the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. I can't tell if that X was done by uh, whoever owned this comic long before I did or if that's actually printed on there. I don't think it is printed on there. I think somebody added that little uh, accent to the cover, which would be a real shame because this is in pretty decent condition overall. I'll have to look that one up. And then we've got another Aquaman here. This is one I remember fondly. Uh, this is uh, one I even remember where I bought it when I was uh, younger. and That's a nice one. And then we've got uh, another uh, Adventure Comics Aquaman. Who will kill Aquaman? Once again, more superhero death. Aquaman's died like three times just in the books that we've taken out of this box over the last couple of weeks. I mean, he's having a really having a really hard time. It's a novel length C spectacular. This video is becoming an, a novel length uh, comic spectacular. Another shark with a creepy face. What is up with that? It's like nobody at DC Comics back in the 70s could draw sharks. That's what I'm getting out of this. So uh, yeah, that's number 448. For those of you keeping track at home, there will be a quiz later. This is uh, Batman Family. I always like these quite a lot. This is number two of Batman Family Giant. And uh, Vicki Vale is in here looking like she just stepped out of the 1950s, as well as the Clue Master and Mystery Man, who I don't remember very well. The Astonishing Adventure of Batgirl, who breaks up the dynamic duo. It looks like uh, Robin is going to have to choose sides. I don't know what's going to happen there. I always loved these uh, Batman family comics from the 70s. And I remember that uh, a t-shirt came out, uh, I think it was from Graffiti, uh, oh, quite a while ago with this logo on there. And I always wanted to get a copy of that t-shirt and never did because I would totally wear that. That would be awesome. So uh, what else do we have here? We've got an old Superboy that I foolishly did not put in any sort of bag. That's a beautiful cover. Uh, that is awesome. I'm going to assume that this is, yeah, this is Lana Lang. And there's, uh, there's a young Clark Kent. 
And uh, this is uh, Superboy and uh, Lana, but as mummies. I can't even understand what could possibly be happening here. Undoubtedly, magic is to blame for this. It's the curse of the Superboy mummy. Man, who approved that story? I do not. It doesn't even sound like it's going to make sense. So uh, let's see. It's more Superman down here. That's a pretty cool looking comic here. It's got a terrible spine roll, but it's a pretty cool looking cover and it's it's a nice white cover too. It's really a shame about these rips in the spine and, and the horrible roll. I, I don't know. Maybe uh, Gary, I know you, Gary, uh, the casual comic guy, I know you send your comics in often to get them graded and you get them pressed too. Is this something that can be repaired during that process? Gary, if you, if you happen to be watching this video, maybe leave me a comment and let me know if that's something that can be repaired in that uh, process, because uh, it's a nice looking comic. I doubt it would grade very well though, but I'm just curious. So it's real, not imaginary. See what happens when Lois time travels to Krypton before it exploded. That actually sounds pretty cool. That sounds really cool. Lois, you thief, how dare you try to steal jor -El. He's my boyfriend. So uh, Lois Lane v. Lois Lane catfight is what I'm getting out of this. That's uh, pretty awesome. Looking forward to uh, paging through that. We've got a nice Batman book here. And uh, that's the Black Spider. And uh, I, I can't remember if this is the first issue of that or not. And this is an unusual book too. And one of you guys who know a lot more about vintage comics than I seem to be able to recall will have to tell me what it means when you see the Whitman logo in the corner there. I wonder if this was uh, issued this wouldn't be, it would be newsstand because of that, but the Whitman logo makes me think it was issued in some sort of special uh, package with other comics, maybe available at a, a toy store or something like that, because um, it does not have the DC logo on it at all, which is very unusual. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but uh, pretty cool cover. I like that one. I like the, uh, the dark nighttime background there. We've got a nice old Batman here. This is Batman number 156 and now Robin is dead. So yeah, we're, we're having a really, really good day. If you like superhero death, this is the place for you. You found it. Yep, Robin's dead. He sacrificed himself for me on this alien world. Now see, that is where you're going wrong if you're writing a Batman story. You don't put Batman on an alien world. That just, I mean, he's just a guy. He doesn't have any superpowers. How is he even breathing? on this alien world. This has a terrible rip in it, which is too bad. Uh, here's another old Batman book. This one is Detective Comics. Oh no, there are two. I'm holding two here. I'm going to put this one back momentarily. Another Detective Comics. This is Detective Comics number 378. It's probably from the, uh, I would guess, the late 60s because it is a 12 cent book. That usually means from the 60s. This is a pretty cool uh, cover, actually. It's very unusual. Um, just the cover of the Gotham News showing Batman and Robin split, and that's that's all we really have to go on there. That's a really unusual cover for a comic. I like that one. That's pretty neat. And it's in pretty good shape too. It's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bad corner there. But uh, overall it's it's in pretty good shape for a comic as old as it is. I'm very, very curious as to how old this one, and I need to be very, very careful. It was published in 1968, so uh, that's pretty neat. I, uh, I do like that one a lot. Um, we are coming up on uh, 20 minutes on this video at this point, and it does not look like I'm going to uh, get through this whole box. So we will we will go ahead and uh, push some of this box to part three. We'll look at a few more comics maybe, and then we'll uh, push the rest of this box to part three. I have to tell you, I did not expect this to take three episodes, but uh, that is where we are looking at these uh, really sweet looking old comics. This is Detective. 329, also a 12 cent comic and a similar logo to the one that we just looked at there. So I imagine this is from the same general time period. It looks like uh, they are in the basement somewhere and uh, it's a castle with walled wall danger. That sounds awesome too. That sounds really good. The spine here is in much worse shape than the previous one. We've got some rips and some rolling, so that's not ideal. It also contains a new elongated man story, which I gotta tell you, it's not really a selling point for me. I mean, nothing against Ralph, but I really uh, am not into Elongated Man. So let's look at just a couple more, and then we will we will seal this box back up until uh, next time. Here's another uh, vintage Aquaman. This is number 31, and uh, he's battling a tank and some dudes in really weird Space Age helmets there, so I'm in favor of that. Ogre Strikes Again. I guess that's an acronym for something. 
and that must be the organization that uh, Aquaman is battling. He had sunglasses on too, man. I'd like to see that. Aquaman wearing sunglasses. That can't happen very much in comics. I wonder what Ogre stands for. It's an acronym for Organization of uh, Great Something. I don't know. I'm not being... I'm kind of drawing a blank on what that could be. Organized, Grim... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure somebody can tell me in the comments what that stands for. We'll get one more here. It's a nice Superman one where it looks like he's battling Clark Kent with cannonballs. How can you go wrong with that? One of these men is Superman, the other is Clark Kent, obviously. One is a hero, the other is an outlaw. What? Only one of them can live? What? It's the battle of the alter egos, and this looks like uh, it got smeared somehow, maybe from a pencil eraser or something. That's what that looks like to me. This has also got a little bit of a spine roll, but the spine's overall not in bad shape, and, and the cover's actually not in too bad a shape either, other than that uh, pencil smudge there, a little dust on there, but uh, that's that's about it. So that's uh, pretty nice. I'm curious to see what year this is from, too. I'm being very careful with these, of course. This is from 66, and uh, you can see what the inside looks like there. Continuation of them throwing cannonballs at each other. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever tried to pick up a real cannonball, you don't do it with one hand. It's not like an old duck pin bowling ball. None of you know what that is. I just realized duck pin bowling was very popular in Baltimore. And uh, you can probably still, there are several lanes there. You probably still go duck pin bowling, but that's about one of the only places you can do that. But anyway, cannonballs are super heavy. You need two hands for one of those, and you probably wouldn't be able to throw it with very much force. So there you go. You, you, uh, oh, we've got, man, look at that fantastic Wonder Woman coming up there. That looks great. We will finish off this box in the uh, next comic book episode that we do on Card Wolf, as this is a very long video, as all of mine always seem to be. I don't know why that is. But anyway, we got through quite a stack there, and I will be uh, bagging and boarding many of those. I want to thank you guys for watching the channel today. I really appreciate it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I know it's not uh, trading cards today, but uh, still, I, I think it's pretty fun to see some of this old art, even if you may not collect comics. It's a lot of fun to look at that. So I'll be back tomorrow with dorking with dice that's right tomorrow is another episode of dorking with dice and it's going to be dorking with dice on ice yes we're doing another hockey episode and uh, that was what the votes were for i asked you guys to vote last week and uh, overwhelmingly people said keep the hockey for another week card wolf so that's what we're going to do we've got a lot of big packs in the dorking box so you guys uh, hopefully will see one or more of those get open tomorrow. So once again, thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate each and every one of you, and uh, I will be back tomorrow. As always, happy collecting.